Jam packed. You got waiting. Some have had 20 open seats, 25 open seats. Might be worth a better drive. Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to call to order this meeting of the uh, zoning commission. Um, after we take roll, I've got a couple of housekeeping items I'd like to go over, and um, then we'll get started. So let's uh, call the meeting to order, and please call the roll. Commissioner Kirkin. Here. Commissioner Wofford. Here. Commissioner Stratton. Commissioner Stratton. Commissioner Christian. Here. Commissioner Stauffer. Commissioner Stauffer. Commissioner Strom. Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Wood. Here. Commissioner Gooden. He's here. I, I see him there. Here. Commissioner Graven. Present. Chairman Moore. Present. And Joe Gooden, just so you know, you're muted, uh, so you can unmute your phone. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I double check Commissioner Stratton? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Stauffer? Yes. Four, five, four, five. Yes. Commissioner Stauffer? Okay, I have a meeting with the city, so. <clears throat> Commissioner Strom? Commissioner Strom? Commissioner Johnson. Good to go. All right, so we got a little bit different uh, order of march tonight, but we're going to try to do this as we normally do. Um, we're going to go through the the previous month's minutes. We're going to ask for approval of those. I'm going to read through the cases one by one and uh, see if folks are here. Uh, I am going to wait, however, to uh, record the objectors until the actual case is called, just in case those folks are having technical difficulties. Um, and then we'll go through the hearing process, um, which is not going to be remarkably different. Uh, I will say, as a general ho housekeeping right. item, if you've got barking dogs or motor noises or other noises <laughs> around the house, I'd ask you to mute yourself. And uh, mission control here at the city will also uh, mute uh, if, if there's a problem. And you, there is the ability, if you've mastered this, to raise your hand, but uh, I may not always be able to see that, um, especially since I've got about 20 cubes here on my screen. So I'd ask for your patience, and um, let's get started. So I do have for the previous month's minutes. I'd ask for a motion uh, to approve those minutes, please. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by uh, Commissioner Wood, seconded by Commissioner Stratton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. like sign. Um, as I read through these cases, uh, I'm mainly interested to know if the, if the petitioner or their uh, representative is here. And I'm going to start with uh, City Legal, uh, <laughs> Linda O'Brien. We have amendment to Chapter 155, Section 155001, et cetera. Are you wanting to extend that or? Con or? Yes, uh, Commissioner, um, Chairman Tim, we would like to ex uh, continue that for 30 more days, please. Okay, very good. Uh, do I have a motion to continue uh, docket number 2018-055 by so Commissioner moved. Wood. So moved. Seconded by Commissioner Kruger. Please call the roll. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. 
Commissioner Strom. Commissioner Christian. She, she's saying yes. yes. There she yes, is. I'm sorry, I had it muted. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Stauffer. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Wofford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Silas Johnson. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson, is that a yes? Yes, that's a yes. <laughs> uh, I was trying to get in on my computer, but it wouldn't let me in. You're set you now. <laughs> we, we read you loud and clear. All right, thank you. You bet. So the rest of the cases I'm going to read through <clears throat> one by one. Uh, docket number 2020-006-2401 Wabash Avenue. Are you present? I am. Very good. Uh, docket number 2020-007, 5 Fox Mill Lane. Are you present? I am. Uh, docket number 2020-008-910 South Grand Avenue. Are you Horton present? Horton Karen Khan. Okay, very good. Uh, docket number 2020-009 on 2200 East South Grand Avenue, etc. Present. Very good. Uh, docket number 2020-010-1430 South 7th Street. I'm here. Very good. Uh, docket number 2020-011-4351 Yuckton Drive. Here. Very good. Docket number 2020-012-1921 and 23 East Washington and Clear Lake Avenue. Here. Okay. Docket number 2020-013-1035 North MacArthur Boulevard. Here, sir. And here as well. Very good. Uh, docket number 2020-014, 5 Forest Ridge Lane. We're here. here. Very good. And by council. Very good. Uh, docket number 20, excuse me, 2020-015, 2121 Noble Avenue. I'm here, but I've just sent a note into the chat uh, room here stating that I would like to have my petition held and have my hearing next month because I'm going to do a redesign of the project. Okay, so first, uh, Catherine, thank you for being here, and uh, we will bring that up and ask for postponement here in a few moments, okay? Okay. Uh, docket number 2020-017, I have a note of withdrawal. Is that correct, Mr. Gates? Yes, that's withdrawn. Thank you. Nice tie. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that 017? Yeah. Sorry, 017. Yeah. 017. Okay. Docket number 2020-018-2625 to 29 Chatham Road. Present by council. Very good. Docket number 2020-019, parcels on 6420, et cetera. Uh, South 6th Street, Frontage Road. Here, here by council, and I believe also present. Okay. I think we skipped 16. Did I skip 16? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I apologize. Uh, docket number 2020 016, 17, 15, 17, and 19, South 2nd Street. We're here. Very good. Looks like we have everybody in the house. Uh, if, if it serves your pleasure, I'd like to uh, ask for a motion to continue the 2121 Noble Avenue docket number 2020-015. So moved. Moved and, second. and, and seconded. Mr. Kruger, you second that? Yes. Very good. Let's call the roll. Sorry, I, I jumped ahead on you. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stauf Stauffer. Yes. Commissioner, yes. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Wolfer. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. 
Very good. Uh, Catherine O'Connor, that's continued to next month then. You'll receive uh, a call or paperwork from uh, zoning department to that effect. Call or paperwork from okay, thank you. Uh, zoning department to that effect. Call or paperwork from zoning department to that Okay, at this point, I'm going to go through the procedures that we're going to follow tonight. They're not a whole lot different than normal. So what's going to happen is I call the case up. Uh, professional staff will swear in here in a moment. The professional staff will read the case and then we'll uh, take uh, any comments from uh, the city engineers, the legal department, uh, et cetera. We'll hear the petitioner. If there are objectors, we will ask for objectors at, at that time. And again, the reason we're doing that just a little bit different is that people are joining or dropping because of the technology. We want to make sure that all objectors are heard. And then uh, if there are objectors, they'll be heard. And then the petitioner will give a, a, be given a moment to rebut that. And then a, uh, what happens next is we close the public portion of the discussion. If there are other questions from the commissioners, those are discussed among commissioners. And then a motion is entertained and voted upon at that time. Any questions about the procedures? And then you'll have a hearing just like this uh, here at City Council on, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have the date in front of me. Uh, it is going to be May 19th. May, May 19th. On May 19th. 5.30. At 5.30, right here in this chambers. Uh, the other thing is I'd like to, uh, housekeeping item is the proof of publication. Uh, because we don't have the ability for you to hand that to us tonight, we'd need you to, to uh, drop that off or send it or email it over to, uh, to the zoning office at your earliest convenience. Any questions about that? And uh, Commissioner Stratton has joined us, Betsy, if you would mark him as present, please. And then, folks, what I'd like you to do, if you could, is mute yourself until I call your case. That way, we won't have all the, the competing background noise. So, professional staff, if you'd raise your, your hand and, and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Very good. And uh, let's bring up docket number 202006. Tim, while you're doing that, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, Bruce. Okay. And go ahead, please. Okay. The requested zoning is a conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.031C7. Conditional permitted use is in the S2 community shopping and office district in section 155.211, restaurants with the service of alcoholic beverages, to operate two restaurants with the service of alcoholic beverages, one suite A and one suite B. The proposed land use is two restaurants with the service of alcohol. The existing zoning is S2 community shopping and office district, section 155.031. The existing land use is a 6,498 square foot building under construction at the Southeast Access Drive to White Oaks Mall that contains two tenant spaces. The road frontage is 159.2 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The structure is designed for commercial and it's under construction. The lot area is approximately 47,044.8 square feet or 1.08 acres. The front yard is approximately 85 feet. The west side yard is approximately 73.06 feet. The east side yard is approximately 65 feet. And the rear yard is approximately 31.9 feet. Staff recommends approval subject to the following conditions. One, the area of the two restaurants is limited to a approximately 6,498 square feet as shown on the site plan submitted with the petition. Two, hours of operation for the two restaurants shall be limited to the city liquor license. And three, a, a solid fence substantially similar to the fence shown on the site plan submitted with the petition shall be constructed and maintained along the eastern property line. Constructing and maintaining a solid fence will help provide a solid buffer between the proposed restaurant and the residents to the east. End of report. Traffic engineer? Uh, no comments. Legal? I'll take that as no comment. Uh, petitioner, if you would unmute, please, and identify yourself uh, for the record and tell us what city you're from. And everything froze.
Tom Chi. Everything just froze. Okay, mine's reconnecting. <clears throat> the whole thing froze up in here. It's reconnecting right now. Okay. What could go wrong? Hmm? What, what could go wrong? <laughs> Isn't technology great? Yep. Yes. Who was who was the last one to speak? Uh, Steve and me. Yeah. It's recognition. Maybe he didn't like you. Maybe. It happens to me all the time. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we um, we use a technology called Microsoft Teams, and we'll have 500 people on. Uh, yeah, wow. but we've also uh, used a one called conference, free conference call dot com for a nonprofit I work with, and it was it was good. But I had nobody do any video because. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying, it just. Oh, I apologize. So it varies by the technology. We're waiting to reconnect here, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, please bear with us. I'm, I'm getting no connection, uh, IT. I'm going to try joining from the browser. Let's see if that works. seem to work. I've got this. I don't know. I tried logging into this using the password the gate. Director of Construction and Development, and we are the owners and owners of that lot. As staff had mentioned, it's a roughly 6,400 square foot building, two tenants with a mod pizza and a mission barbecue. Um, both would like to serve alcohol. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind, though, that neither are a typical bar. You know, they are a fast casual restaurant that typically serves beer uh, along with it. You know, people don't come and stay there for a long period of time. You know, it's a short, you know, half hour or so meal and, and they're out the door. Um, <clears throat> reading or looking through the conditions that planning had on that, I don't think there are any issues. Obviously, the building is set. We're under construction. We're set under the four thousand, or sorry, six thousand four hundred ninety-eight square feet. 
it was listed on the plan, the hours of operation, you know, it is what it is. If it, if the liquor license states they can only be operational for a period of time, then they'll have to abide by that. And the third point being the fence, uh, there currently is a six foot white vinyl privacy fence that will be constructed along the entire Eastern property line to buffer between our property and the residential property to the east. So as far as we're concerned, uh, we can abide by all three. Um, and I would, I guess, request that we uh, hopefully can get this uh, approved by, by the Planning Commission and uh, continue on with our construction, hopefully open up and, and not have any more delays in construction that we've seen so far. Okay, very good, uh, Mr. Dalman. If you would uh, stand right there or hold right there, sorry. Uh, did we have any objectors to the case? Just one, I think. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, can you state your name and the city you're from, please? Sure. My name is Pat Fitzgerald, Springfield. I am actually Fitzgerald. participating on behalf of my son. Mr. Uh, Fitzgerald, do you, promise, Fitzgerald. do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Very good. Continue. Sorry about that. Um, my son just bought the duplex, which is immediately adjacent to the property where they're building the restaurants. Technically, we're objecting, but we have no serious objection to the to the businesses or the construction or anything like that. But there are two things that, that are concerning. One is um, a six foot fence that uh, the petitioner is, is talking about building. Uh, the white vinyl is, is fine, but uh, there's already a six foot old wooden fence there which is not tall enough to uh, prevent people from the, the new construction actually looking into uh, the westward uh, bedroom of, of that duplex. And so if there was some way that maybe they could, would agree to make it just a couple of feet taller, uh, that, that would be, be great, okay? Uh, the second thing, and again, I, I, I don't know that the commission has the authority or the ability to actually mandate this, but maybe the, the street department does. Um, the, the, the houses are on Lombard Street. It's west end, dead ends at the uh, fence to uh, the petitioner's property. Um, right now, at, at the end of the street, there are three of those diamond-shaped red signs so that people know that the street ends. We would simply ask that, that uh, no parking signs be uh, erected right there at the very end of that street because uh, due to the proximity of the driveways, both on, on both sides of the street, Mr. Fitzgerald, if, if people um, I'm, park there, it really blocks the driveways and there's no uh, entrance or exit from the park from the driveways of Mr. The two Fitzgerald. That, that that's not germane to the zoning, and so okay. we, we'll have to take that up separately um, right. through through the city's uh, street department's channel. Sounds sounds very good. Uh, with that, I would respectfully uh, thank the commission and and the uh, the developer uh, for their time in letting me speak. Thank you. And uh, commissioners, do we have questions? Uh, we have an approval, uh, recommended approval on the table. Uh, do I have questions from the commissioners for the petitioner yes. or the objector? Mr. Strom? Excuse me? Did you have an objection or a question, Mr. Strom? No, I do not. Oh. I have a question. Uh, go Mr. ahead, Commissioner, commissioner Wolford. Um, my question is: They said they they were they're going to have us. This this petition says a solid fence substantially similar to the fence shown. So it is going to be, in fact, a six foot solid plastic white fence. That is currently what we're planning. Yeah, okay. and it's been approved. Okay. So then I have a question for staff: um, Can we can <coughs> should, can we um, in within this petition ask for it? to be higher, like eight foot or what, What you know, because the objector would just like it to be a little taller. So when I looked at the picture, I do see that you can see right over the fence currently, and that's a six foot fence. So I'm not sure how to address the fence issue possibly. 
if the Planning and Zoning Commission feels that they would like to have a taller fence, I would defer to legal counsel, but um, staff's analysis is not going to change at this point if that's the question. Okay, so legal, is there, is um, that... If the commission wants to make it a condition um, that the, uh, the buffer fence is a little taller, um, they could make that a um, condition. Okay. Other Mr. questions Kim? for this petitioner? I have a question for the petitioner. Commissioner Good, go ahead. Uh, does a petitioner object to an eight-foot fence? If we always want to be good neighbors, um, if there's concern from a neighbor about the height of the fence and they want it a couple of feet taller, up to eight feet, I honestly don't think that's a big deal. And if it means um, making everybody happy and getting an approval on this, then I'd be more than willing to do that. Very good. Anybody else? Anybody else? At this point, I would like to close the public portion of the meeting huh? and entertain a uh, motion. Got Mac? Excuse me? Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we accept the recommendation of staff and include in the recommendation. Well, wait, wait a minute. Can we discuss it? Uh, uh, Commissioner Wood is making the motion to include the uh, the additional feet on the fence. Commissioner Wolford, is that okay? Or did you want to discuss right, it that's further? what I want. Right, okay. I okay. didn't hear him say, he was like, I make a motion. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, hold on, okay. So go ahead and restate your, your motion, Tom. Make a motion that we accept the recommendation of staff, but include we can't hear him, or at least I can't hear him. I'll restate no. it. He's making a motion to accept the recommendation of staff with the exception of raising the height of the fence to eight feet. I'd second that motion. Yeah, I'll second. Whatever. Seconded by Commissioner Gooden and Commissioner Wolford. Hmm? Please call the roll. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stopper. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Okay. Commissioner Stratton. He's frozen. Okay. Commissioner Wolford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden? Yes. Call Stratton again. Commissioner Stratton? Yes. Okay, so uh, Mr. Dahlman, you have uh, approval and you have another meeting like this on uh, May the 19th at 5.30 p.m. in the council chambers, and hopefully it'll be warmer and uh, we'll be past this. All right, appreciate everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. The next case is 2020-007, uh, 5 Fox Mill Lane. Are you present, 5 Fox Mill Lane? Yes, Phil Martin with Martin Engineering representing Brett and Susan Shaw. Okay, and do we have objectors to this case? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. CWLP is the objector. So uh, can I ask you gentlemen to raise your right hand and, and swear to tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay. Very good. And uh, let's have staff read the report on 5 Fox Mill Lane. Okay. The requested zoning is to vary Appendix A, Section 3 setbacks of the land use plan for Lake Springfield to allow installation of the in-ground pool to the south side of the new house that will cross over the, set, the required 75-foot setback. The new pool will be 45.52 feet from the shoreline. The new pool deck will be 35.07 feet from the shoreline. The proposed land use is a single-family residence with new in-ground pool. The existing zoning is R1 single-family residence district, Section 155.016. The existing land use is a single-family residence in in 
ground pool. The road frontage is approximately 414.9 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The structure is designed for a residence. The condition of the structure is good. The lot area is approximately 47,480 square feet. The front yard is approximately 124 feet. The west side yard is approximately 48 feet. The east side yard is approximately 112 feet. The rear yard is approximately 62 feet. And for the pool, it is proposed at 35.07 to 45.52 feet. Staff recommends denial. The petition states, quote, there are unique circumstances given that the existing pool and deck are 50 54.68 and 43.41 feet from the shoreline respectively. This relocation is requested to maximize the appeal of the position of the new house on the lot and to utilize the topography as much as possible, end quote. Maximizing the appeal of a house is the goal of any home improvement project. This, however, does not indicate a blight due to unique circumstance of the property to justify moving the pool closer to the lake shoreline when other options are available. Staff further found upon the site visit that while the site does have topography differences, this is not uncommon for the area. The petition also did not provide evidence of why the proposed proposed variance meets the first standard for variation. Staff finally notes that there are no other pools in this cove that are closer than the required than the 75 foot required lake setback. Staff does not believe the standards for variation are met. End of report. Traffic engineer. No comments. Very good. So uh, <coughs> Mr. Martin, you have an unfavorable <coughs> staff recommendation, recommended denial. Uh, what would you like to tell us tonight? First of all, I was wondering if uh, any or all of you received an email that I sent to Betsy late this afternoon, about four o'clock, which were some of the notes that I was gonna touch on. It's not critical if you didn't. Uh, I know that Betsy sent that out, is the short answer from the chair. Uh, it's, really, it's really not critical. Um, but it's just my talking points and I'm gonna go on if I can, sir. Please go ahead. Well, um, with regard to the uh, standards of variation for, first of all, the Shunks bought this property a year or two ago um, with the intent of uh, knocking down the building and the uh, pool and building new. And um, we've been working with them. There's a lot of utilities that cut across this property. And um, their proposed plan is basically to put it back where it is. Um, the house and the pool, if you look at my initial submittal, you can see that they're overlaid pretty damn close to where they are right now. Uh, it results in a pool deck itself being eight feet closer to the shoreline. Um, I think I think that the uh, proposed improvements are gonna cause no harm to the neighbors or to the city. Um, the pool and the deck are gonna be designed such that any water drained, chlorinated or salt water will discharge a minimum of 75 feet from the lake. And I think that's one of the uh, major rules for the uh, 75 foot setback out there. Um, if you do have the information I sent you, you see an email from the neighbor, basically the only neighbor, unless you go across the cove or the bay. Uh, and that would be Mike George. And he's, uh, he's in approval of keeping the pool where we have it proposed to be. Uh, there's no visibility, no light, no noise issues. Um, I think it's unique. It's somewhat pinned in by a bunch of utilities that are either A, running underneath <coughs> the pool. There's a sanitary sewer underneath the existing pool deck, not the pool, sorry. And then B, along the uh, north, northeast side of the house, we've got a, a, a electric, city water light and power electric and city water light and power water. So uh, early on, we got involved to talk to them. Uh, we currently have a plan to relocate all three of those and to move the pool eight or to a 75 foot setback uh, because of the eight feet would be a lot of hardship as far as additional costs for the utility relocations 
for my uh, client. And so, therefore, I would ask the commission to uh, vote in favor of the variance. Okay, and before we take uh, questions from the commissioners, uh, I'd like to hear from the objector, please. Uh, yes, Ted Meckes from City Water, Light and Power. Um, we have submitted a written statement. I'd like that put in the record as if it was read. Um, we object, we see no, you know, they not meeting, they have not met the uh, standards of variation for the economic benefit of this. Um, whether they put the pool where it is now or a, a new location, there's real no economic difference. So I just want to state that and, and we agree with the staff recommendation of denial. Very good. Commissioners, you have questions for either the petitioner or the objectors at this time. I have a question for the petitioner. Commissioner Gooden. Uh, Mr. Martin, did you say that the footprint of the pool is in the same location as the previous pool and it is only the deck that encroaches closer to the lot? No, sir. Um, I got it right here. I think it's in the submittal. The old pool was 55 feet from the shoreline and now we're 46 feet and the deck itself was 35 and now it's gonna be 43. Okay, I'm sorry. What I said was we're pretty close to the exact footprint. I think uh, if I could add to that, I would say um, with regard to the neighbors, which I think is relevant um, this is by far the best location for the house. It's the farthest away from the, uh, the next door neighbor, the Georges, as it can possibly be. And it's buffered by a uh, city wire light and power land use property. The tenant or the owner access the pool out the back door like the previous owners did? They will. And if, the, bill, if the, the pool was built elsewhere on the lot, how would they access the pool? Is there another entrance to the house or would they have to craft a, a walkway of some type? Yes. And Commissioner the, Woods. Sanitary Sir, where, where does it discharge now or where, where will it discharge? <coughs> sanitary sewer drains a large main that comes from Lincoln land and literally goes right in the backyard of this property underneath the existing pool deck. It goes to a pump station that is located by the shoreline uh, within feet of our property. It's then pumped through our property. That's why I have an issue with uh, moving the house in the pool around too much because I'm already relocating that force main. And uh, now I would have to take the force main and the water main and the electric even further out than we already are planning on doing. Okay. Commissioner Wood. What's the problem with leaving it in the current footprint? Can't hear him. Uh, what's the problem with leaving it in the current footprint? We would have to, like I said, we would have to move everything up the hill, uh, eight or 10 feet. And uh, that just causes a little bit more utility relocation costs. And uh, this is where they would like to place the house. And um, I guess that's it. Does that answer your question? One of the other things I guess I need to point out kind of makes this unique is we would like to utilize the existing excavations for the pool and the basement itself. Um, if we move it out of that footprint, we're gonna have to uh, fill those up and have settlement and such to deal with. Other questions for the petitioner or the objector? Seeing none, I'd like to close the uh, public portion of the discussion and open the, the floor to the commissioners for discussion or entertain a motion. Make a motion that we accept the recommendation of staff. 
Motion by Commissioner Wood to accept the recommendation of staff. Do I have a second? Second, second by Commissioner Graven. Please call the roll. Who made the second? I didn't. Silas Johnson. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, Dean. I thought that was you. <coughs> no. Commissioner Johnson made the second. My apologies. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, to accept the recommendation, yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stauffer. No. Commissioner Stratton. No. Commissioner Wolford. No. Commissioner Kruger. No. Commissioner Graven. No. Commissioner Gooden. No. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Okay, the, the no's have it. Pardon me? The no's have so, it. The no's have it. Can I make a re motion? Pardon me? Yes. So you're going to have a second, a second motion? So we need a second motion. We'll need findings too. With findings. Right. For, for those who are voting no, we need a second motion from you with the findings that would overcome the uh, st or meet the standards of variation. So uh, while you're thinking about that, uh, legal, would you mind uh, re restating the standards of variation? Since we don't have that in front of us tonight. I don't have the... Can John Harris do that, Your Honor? Um, I've got them on a different document. Sure. I've got them right here. You want me to read them, John, or you? No, I got them. Okay. So, standard one: Can the property in question be economically be economically? You be used or yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only for the conditions allowed by the regulations. Standard two, the plight of the owner is due to the unique circumstance. And number three, will the variation, if granted, alter the essential character of the locality, impair an adequate supply of light and air to adjacent property, increase the congestion of traffic, or diminish the impair or impair property values in the locality? Thank you. So we need a motion that meets those three standards. Mr. Chairman, could yes. I ask the petitioner another question? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Martin, where do you intend to discharge water from the pool in what fashion? The pool will be uh, pumped up to a, uh, the equipment that will be up on the side of the house and the house itself, by the way, the structure, I consider that to be a structure. That's an editorial comment. I'm not sure a pool is, but it's, it's defined that way in the uh, ordinance. So we'll go with that. But the, but the house itself is outside the 75 foot setback and we're, you know, midway through the depth of the house with the pool equipment. And so then really up to uh, the pool designer who I've spoken with, he can even run that uh, pump to the front yard or simply uh, get it up to ground level uh, and it'll be similar to a downspout on the side of the house, but it'll be outside the 75 feet, which I think is one of the major intents of the city water, light and power uh, 75 foot setback rules. So we can filter out the sediment and uh, any other pollutants. Uh, Mr. Martin, the, one of the first standard deals with the reasonable return on the property. Do you have an estimate of what it would cost to move the house 10 or 12 feet uh, away from the current location? Um, I would say that that cost is going to be not as important to me as uh, uh, the reasonable return threshold when they bought it. Um, I think they thought they were going to build something right there. Uh, I think it needs to, I think they bought it with the idea that it needed to be updated and, uh, to yield a reasonable return. 
And uh, I think if we were to move it up the hill, it would have defeated the uh, return that they might have reasonably thought they would have had had they been allowed to, I'm going to continue to say, generally place it in the same footprint. Um, it's eight feet further, closer. It's at ground level, it's low impact, it's uh, no visibility issues, no noise, no traffic congestion. The neighbor, really the only neighbor affected is happy with it. And uh, so that's, that's what I think. And I'd also like to ask the general layout that they're proposing is very similar to the current layout, correct? Driveway in the front, house, garage, um, it's, pool, it's a lot right? bigger. Right? Just larger. Yes, sir. And they certainly can't go closer to the lake with it. So we've got to build the house away from it. Can't them. go closer to the lake. And if we go up the hill and we get, then if we go up the hill, we end up getting closer to the neighbor. The only really, only real neighbor that's affected. And then I would have to move the uh, electric and water further. I don't know, Commissioner, if I can put a dollar amount on that. Uh, we've already got uh, estimates to move the uh, electric and the water. Um, I don't think it's going to be, it'll probably be maybe if I put a guess to it, maybe $10,000 more. Thank you. Commissioner Good, do you have a motion that you'd like to proffer to the this body? Uh, yes, I think I would make a motion uh, to grant the petition as submitted uh, based on the testimony of Mr. Martin and that they, a reasonable return uh, expected would be lost if they had to move the house eight or ten feet further away from the lake than it currently sits. Um, I think that the uh, item two, as far as the plight of the owner, I would imagine when you look at a property and want to buy it, decide to replace it, it's, I think, essentially the same layout, but in a larger format. Uh, and I know there's a huge utility easement between them and the George house uh, that I don't think that a pool efficiently could be placed there. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. But I think that would be a huge cost undertaking to relocate those utilities. And I believe that the, uh, because the pool and the deck are at grade or below grade, I don't believe they'll have an adverse effect on the adjoining properties or the neighborhood. Very good. Do I have a second? Second. And that was uh, Commissioner Graven. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Gooden, seconded by Commissioner Graven to accept the petition as submitted. Please call the roll. So a yes vote here is to approve the petition as submitted and reject the staff recommendation. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Strom? No. Commissioner Christian? No. Commissioner Stauffer? Yes. Commissioner Stratton? Yes. Commissioner Wooford? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Graven? Yes. Commissioner Gooden? Yes. Commissioner Wood? No. The yeses have it. Okay, so the yeses have it. And uh, Petitioner, you have, uh, Mr. Martin, you have a, a meeting just like this on uh, May the 19th. Good luck to you. 19th, yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, item 20, case number 2020-008, 910 South Grand Avenue West. Are you here, 910 South Court. Grand Avenue West? Court and Karen Conn are present. Okay, very good. Uh, any objectors to this case? Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Conn, if you'd stay right there for just a minute, we're gonna have the staff read the report. We did receive a letter on this. I'm sorry? We received a comment on this and should be in your packet. Okay, very good. I'll point that out after Steve reads the yeah. okay. 
The requested zoning is a conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.031C3, conditional permitted uses in the S2 community shopping and office district, and section 155.200 taverns to allow a tavern. Very section 155.200A2 taverns to allow a tavern with liquor sales by the drink on a zoning lot which is located within 100 feet from the nearest lot in which there is a residence, church, school, park, community facility, or daycare. The proposed land use is a tavern. The existing zoning is S2 community shopping and office district section 155.031 the existing land use is a vacant commercial building the road frontage is 40 feet the condition of the pavement is good structure is designed for a dry cleaner the condition of the structure is fair slash good the lot area is approximately 4,800 square feet the front yard is approximately has a setback of approximately 0 to 1 feet the west side yard is approximately 19 feet the east side yard is approximately 0 to 1 feet and the rear yard is approximately 58 feet staff recommends approval of the requested conditional permitted use with the following conditions one the tavern is limited to the existing building footprint with outdoor seating limited to less than 600 square feet as shown on the site plan attached to the petition two hours of operation for the tavern shall be limited to the city liquor license three no live entertainment and four the traffic configuration on the site shall be substantially similar to the site plan provided with the petition to the satisfaction of the city traffic engineer Recommend approval of the requested variance <laughs> the petition states quote the property is located in an area in transition. There are many commercial establishments and office buildings in the immediate area surrounding the property. And other than the residential dwellings in question, which are housed in buildings, which also include office, the nearest single family residential developments are located several blocks away from the property in any given direction, end quote. Staff does not necessarily agree that the nearest residences are several blocks away. However, staff finds does find that there is plight in that the nearest residences, while within 100 feet, are located across the four lane arterial road, i.e. South Grand Avenue West. The standards for variation are met. End of report. Traffic. Due to the size of the parcel, only the minimum number of parking spaces on site can be accommodated per a site plan provided from the architect. There is no parking allowed on South Grand and the parcel is surrounded by neighboring properties. The owner should be aware that parking is likely to be an issue on site and it is therefore recommended that the owner consider pursuing agreements with the surrounding property owners for reciprocal parking. If the owner is unable to obtain any agreements with the surrounding properties, they should be aware of potential issues and conflicts that may arise due to a lack of parking. At no time will parking be allowed on South Grand Avenue. Very good. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Khan, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, we do. We do. Very good. We do have one uh, letter in opposition, and commissioners, you should have <coughs> received that in your packet. And I'm going to defer to staff. Should I read that into the record, or, or should I uh, just let the commissioners acknowledge it? I think that's a call for corporation counsel. Linda, yeah. Linda O'Brien, should I read it into the record, or just have the commissioners acknowledge that it's in their packet? And if they acknowledge they've got it in their packet, they're uh, presumed to have read their packets. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, have you all received that from the, uh, it's from the Historic West Side Neighborhood Association, and I take acknowledgement of that, and that will be in the record also. If you didn't receive it, and you'd like me to read it, I'm happy to do that. I received it, and I've read it. Everybody else? Received it and read it. Yep. I've received it and read it. Yes. Yes. I received it. Very good. Very good. So uh, you have a positive staff recommendation. Um, is there anything you'd like to add before we we uh, open for questions from the commissioners? Uh, just a few things. One, Court Khan and I both recognize the challenges that parking can play in a business environment when there's limited parking that's available. We've been faced with that challenges before in our downtown properties, and we foresee that in the future we will be able to work with property owners surrounding us. So I, 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 that's a risk that we're willing to take. The second thing is, is I would like to request that staff reconsider the recommendation of no live music on property and consider amending that so that it would reflect no amplified music upon property. And I'd like to give an example of in our downtown property, such as in our beer garden at Obed and Isaacs, we do acoustical music where there would be a, a guitar player and, and maybe a singer 
singer or a bagpipe player. That would be considered live music. Um, and, and it's very compatible to the environment that we are attempting to achieve with the neighborhood pub we're trying to do there at Store 7 or 900 and 10 South, South Grand Avenue. So there is one request I would like for staff recommendation to reconsider. Very good. Uh, commissioners, do you have questions for these petitioners? I just have one question. Um, I, I don't know if they, if they uh, know what the opposition was, but there was a question on the opposition about um, the sale of alcohol um, and they, they, they asked if it would be by drink, essentially, or do you have plans to do packaged liquor? That was one of their concerns. The liquor license that we plan to go before the council would be for on-site consumption only. Okay, thank you. Now, I will. I would like to address that there has been some confusion with the fact that Court and I also own the microbrewery in downtown. We serve growlers and crowlers, which is packaged liquor to go. We would not be allowed with a retail license to interchange between retail liquor licenses to accommodate the sale of crowlers or growlers at the South Grant property. They're two separate liquor licenses and they would not be allowed to sell packaged liquor in original packaging from a uh, retail license there at South Grand, uh, South Grand Avenue. And, I, and, I, and it's hard for me to explain that without giving you a lot of background with the liquor commission laws, but I can assure you that we would not be selling our crowlers and growlers there. Okay, thank you. Other questions for these petitioners? <laughs> Commissioner Johnson? <clears throat> No question. Uh, she answered the question. Okay, thank you. If there are no other questions from the commissioners, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and open to discussion between the commissioners um, and or entertain a motion. I got a question for staff. Okay, Tom, I'll get you next. Go ahead, Crystal. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Uh, well, it was the the, the um, the request of the petitioner can, is there any way um, they can have live music just not amplified? We put the restriction on the no live entertainment kind of looking that there are a number of properties across the street that do have some residences maybe potentially on the second floor. So we looked at that as being uh, something that there are some residences in the area, so we, we put that in there for a reason. So uh, staff would prefer that the original condition remain. Commissioner Wood? That was my question. Other, other questions, commissioners? Other, other discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Good. A motion that we grant the petition is submitted, provided there is no amplified entertainment. So you're going to you're going to amend the the staff recommendation, Joe? Uh, no, I think much of what's in the staff recommendation is a given. Uh, the petitioner has to be compliant with the traffic engineer. The petitioner has to be compliant with the liquor license. Um, if they intend to enlarge the property in any way, they still have to meet the traffic engineer's requirements. All I want to do is grant the petition and prohibit any amplified entertainment. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Gooden and second by Commissioner Wood. Please call the roll. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian? Yes. Commissioner Stauffer? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Stratton? Yes. Commissioner Wolford? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Graven? Yes. Commissioner Gooden? Yes. Commissioner Wood? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. 
Okay, you have a positive outcome of the vote and you have a city council action on Tuesday, May the 19th, 5.30, right here in the chamber or at the local Zoom channel near you. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. The next item is uh, docket number 2020-009, parcels 2200 East South Grand Avenue, et cetera. Are you available? Yes. And if you could identify yourself and what city you're from? Don, Don Craven, counsel for the petitioners, Springfield. Mr. Craven, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And do I have any objectors? Yes, sir. And would you please tell us your name and what city you're from, please? My name is Polly Poskin. I reside at 2361 South 7th Street in Springfield. Ms. Poskin, do you promise to tell the to truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Very good. Uh, staff, would you please read the case? Okay. The requested zoning is for parcels one, two, and three, B1, Highway Business Service District, section 155.033, a conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.033C7, taverns and microbreweries exclusive of drive-in or drive-up windows for the sale of alcohol, section 155.200 taverns with liquor sales uh, by the drink, section 155.033C8, liquor sales package exclusive of drive-in or drive-up windows for the sale of alcohol, and section 155.210, package liquor sales. Very section 155.033C7 and 155.033C8, striking the exclusive of drive in or drive up windows for the sale of alcohol. Section 155.033B3, permitted uses in the B1 Highway Business Service District. All types of drive in services exclusive of drive in or drive up windows for the sale of alcohol. Striking the quote, exclusive of drive in or drive up windows for the sale of alcohol. Section 155.200A2, taverns with liquor sales by the drink to allow a tavern on a lot located less than 100 feet on which there is a residence, church, school, park, community facility, or daycare. Section 155.200A3 to allow drive up or drive in windows for the sale of alcohol, still excluding any tavern sales of alcohol to drive in windows. Section 155.210B, package liquor sales to allow package liquor sales on a lot located less than 100 feet from the nearest residential zoning lot, church, park, community facility, or daycare. And section uh, 155.210C to allow a drive up window, one pay and one pickup for the sale of package liquor related to the liquor store. For parcels four and five, B1 Highway Business Service District Section 155.033, Ferry Section 155.033, B1 Highway Business Service District to permit a R1 single family residence district section 155.016 use in the B1 district, specifically the continued use of a single family residence on each parcel in the B1 district. The proposed land use for parcels one, two, and three is a tavern and package liquor sale store with drive up slash drive in window for a sale of package liquor. And for parcels four and five single family residences, the existing zoning is R2 single family and duplex residence district section 155.017. The existing land use on parcel one is a liquor store, <clears throat> excuse me, a non-conforming use with a drive through window on the west side of the store with a drive through lane entering off South Grand Avenue at intersection with Wheeler. Parcel two is a vacant double lot used as a parking lot with an entrance slash exit on to South Grand. Parcel three is a vacant single lot with an entrance slash exit onto South Grand. Parcel four is a single family residence and parcel five is a single family residence. The road frontage along South Grand is approximately 240 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The road frontage along Wheeler is approximately 152 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The structure is designed for a tavern and package liquor sales store. The condition of the structure is good. The lot area is approximately 36,480 square feet. The front side and rear yards are varied. Would the proposed zoning be spot zoning? No. Is the proposed zoning in accord with the city plan? No. If not in accord, is the request an acceptable variation? Yes. Staff recommends approval of the requested B1 zoning limited to parcels one, two, and three. The city plan designates parcel one commercial and parcels two, three, four, and five lower density residential. As parcels two and three will support more parking in a reconfigured drive up lane on the subject property related to the business, staff feels it's an acceptable variation under the city plan for B1 on these parcels. Recommend approval of the requested conditional permitted uses limited to parcels one, two, and three with the following conditions. One, the tavern and package liquor store are limited to the existing building footprint and the proposed 24 feet by 36 feet walk-in cooler shown on exhibit B attached to the petition. Uh, two, 
Hours of operation for the tavern and the package liquor store shall be limited to the city liquor license. Three, no live entertainment. Four, no outside seating. And five, the traffic configuration on the site shall be substantially similar to the site plan provided with the petition to the city of the tra to the satisfaction of the city traffic engineer. Recommend approval of the requested variances of section 155.033C7, 155.033C8, 155.033B3, 155.200A2, section 155.200A3, section 155.2110B, and section 155.21C as requested. The subject property contains a long-standing tavern since at least 1969, according to Capital Township photos, uh, and package liquor store with drive-up lane that's had congestion problems. The, pros the proposed site plan and revised drive-up configuration will improve the traffic flow for the existing business and remove some of the congestion on the surrounding streets. Recommend denial of the requested B1 zoning for parcels four and five. There's no evidence in the petition to indicate what the final outcome for the residences on parcels four and five will be. Therefore, staff is concerns recommending these two parcels for B1, contrary to the city plan, as there is another residence to the east of these parcels that's not owned by the petitioner, and the R2 zoning provides a buffer from the tavern slash package liquor store. The other variances are not needed due to the recommended rezoning of only parcels one, two, and three to B1, and not parcels four and five as requested by the petitioner. End of report. Traffic engineer. Uh, the only comment I have is that uh, during the uh, building permit stage, the paved access from Wheeler must be removed and replaced with uh, turf landscaping. Very good. Uh, Mr. Craven, you have a, a positive staff recommendation, but you also have uh, opposition. <coughs> Is there anything you'd like to uh, state before uh, we move on? Uh, a couple of things, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, as to the traffic engineer's recommendation, the entrance off of South Grand on the existing drive up lane will be, the, the, a curb will be installed, so it will be blocked and there'll be, um, grass or other, you know, they'll, they'll, it won't be a drive up lane. Uh, the purpose of this whole venture, as, as you can probably tell from the drawings, is simply to, to correct a, a traffic nightmare at, at Wheeler and South Grand. This will allow uh, a reconfiguration of, of that uh, traffic pattern around the store. The the store, except for the addition of a, of a cooler uh, on the back of the store, there'll be no other changes to the to the site plan of the store. There'll be no other changes to the location store. Um, and as to as to the lots four and five, which are the residential lots on the east side of, of this that, that now have residences on them. Uh, we understand the staff's concern. We can accomplish what we want to accomplish at this point uh, without a rezoning of those lots. And we would urge approval of the staff recommendation as, as it's been to the board. Very good. Uh, I'd like to hear from the objectors, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, now, if I understood the petitioner correctly, I, first of all, I wanna state, I have no objection to the drive up services um, portion of the petition, parcels one, two, and three. Um, my objection would be uh, the reclassification of parcels four and five. And if I heard the petitioner correctly, but I'm not, I'm not I mean, I need some help sorting that out. Um, if he is withdrawing that portion of the request, then, I have no objection. If, if that portion of the petition, which the staff objects to remains, then I join the objection. Mr. Craven, would you like to respond? I, I don't have authority to withdraw the request as to lots four and five, I believe it's four and five, the residential lots, uh, but I understand the staff objections and would would join in the staff recommendation to approve the petition as submitted with the exceptions of the of the uh, request on lots four and five. Polly and I agree. I just can't entirely fall on the sword. <laughs> 
I, at this point, I'll open the, the floor to the commissioners to uh, ask their questions of the petitioner and the objector. Uh, petitioner, uh, p commissioners, please proceed. Again, this is Silas Johnson. Uh, I had to take a, a little break a minute. Um, give me that address again, uh, uh, exactly where this liquor store comes. You said South Grand and Wheeler. 2200 East South Grand Avenue and 2214 East South Grand Avenue and 2216 East South Grand Avenue and 2218 East South Grand Avenue in 2220 East South Grand Avenue, Silas, right where uh, South Grand and Wheeler meet on the north side of South Grand. It's GNM. Oh, store. sorry, South I Side. My 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 yeah. apologies. Oh, that that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you. You're welcome. I I just I, I was when looking at this, I was a little bit. I'm a little confused. So I just need um, Don to explain. So. Are they putting the drive through on the other side of where this is currently at? Yes, so we're going to... Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, because I'm trying to envision it. I was like, is it going to be on the other side now as opposed to where it's at now? Right now, right now, the, the drive-in window, and the only access, the only... It's a drive-in store. You can't go right. inside. The, and the drive-in is on the west side of the store. So you come in literally right at the stop sign at Wheeler and you come up to the window, you, you buy what you're going to buy and you, and you, and you go away. What we're going to do is close that. Right at the, so we're going to close, close that drive through window and the entrance is going to be created. There's a parking lot on the east side of the store. Mm -hmm. We're going to create a drive through window that comes um, uh, on the east side of the store, so the, and there will be two windows, one, you know, sort of like McDonald's, pay at the first window, pick up at the second. And then, and they will exit onto South Grand Avenue. Uh, so the entrance will be on the east side of lot three uh, along South Grand. It will circle around and come up to uh, the, the windows, the east side of the store, it will allow for much more stacking of cars. It will reduce the, it will eliminate the congestion at the corner of Wheeler and South Grand. Um, and, and frankly, I mean, the, that's, that's the purpose here is to is to fix that traffic problem. We could we could continue as is uh, because of of. of the status of the store it's grandfathered in, we're trying to fix the traffic pattern so that uh, to, to eliminate a real problem. Okay, I just needed some clarity. I, I wasn't sure because I, what, what I have, I didn't see. You said there was something that was submitted and I might not have pulled it off, so I didn't see it. Okay. Your face, yeah. okay. There, yeah, but yeah, Commissioner, we, we, are, we are literally moving the drive up window from one side of the store yeah. to the other. Okay. Other questions for the petitioner? Seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public portion of the uh, discussion and open the floor to commissioners for uh, internal discussion or entertain a motion. Motion to accept the recommendation of staff. I have a motion second. to accept the recommendation of staff by Commissioner Wood. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wolford. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gooden. I have a question for the uh, person making the motion. Would they accept as a friendly amendment to require the landscape along uh, the side street wheel as stated by the traffic engineer? Yes. Yes, he would accept that. To it. And I'll second that. And that uh, amendment is accepted and seconded? Yes. Very good. Please call the roll. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stopper. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Commissioner Stratton. He's frozen. Commissioner Wofford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. 
Commissioner Wood? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Strom? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Stratton? He's muted. He's mute. You're muted, Charlie. Give me a thumbs up, Charlie. Or a thumbs down. Are we good? Yes, thank you. Yes. 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 I vote yes. Okay. <laughs> it gets more exciting if you if you stay tuned for next week. Yeah. <laughs> uh so you have another meeting just like this on Tuesday, May the 9th at 5.30. And I uh, hope May 19th? Pardon me? May 19th? That's what it tells me right here. Okay. And I hope it's as, I, I don't know if their, if their uh, season two will be as exciting as season one has been. I'm going to go watch the rest of Tiger King. Thank you all. Golly. <laughs> <laughs> Reality TV doesn't get much better than this. Uh, <laughs> docket number 2020 010 1430 South 7th Street uh, do, do I have the petitioner in the house yes we're here and please state your name and what city you're from Phil Martin Springfield Illinois Colleen Stone from Springfield Illinois <clears throat> And do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We do. Yes. Very good. And do I have any objectors to this case? No objectors. At this point, I'd like the Steve, if you'd please read the staff report. The requested zoning is R2 single family residence district section 155.017, ferry section 155.055 minimum lot width for residences to reduce the required lot width for residences in the R2 district from 50 feet to 40 feet, and section 155.061C basic yard requirements to reduce the corner south side yard setback east Pine Street property line for lot 9 from 12 and a half feet to 10 feet. The proposed land use is two single family residences. The existing zoning is B1 Highway Business Service District, section 155.0. Through three, the existing land use is vacant. The road frontage along 7th Street is 80 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The road frontage along Pine is 152.83 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The lot area is approximately 12,226.40 square feet. Uh, would the proposed zoning be spot zoning? No. Is the proposed zoning in accord with the city plan? Yes. Staff recommends approval. <clears throat> the requested down zoning to R2 is in accord with the city plan and the existing residence immediately to the north makes the subject property marginal for its current B1 zoning. Pertaining to the variances, the requested variances will allow the subject property to be used for two single family residences, which use is contemplated by the city plan and is consistent with the way other lots are platted in the immediate area, which helps improve the reasonable return on the subject property. The standards for variation are met and a report. Uh, you folks, you have a, a favorable, oh, scar, sorry, TJ, uh, traffic no report. Okay, uh, there is no on-street parking along 7th Street in the frontage along this parcel, which could lead to parking congestion along Pine Street or issues with residents trying to park illegally. As this parcel cannot be developed as two single-family homes without requesting zoning relief due to the size of the parcels, it is recommended that it be developed as one single-family lot across lots 9 and 10, which would only require... R1 zoning. Very good. Uh, Mr. Martin, uh, you have a positive staff recommendation. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to address TJ's comments, if I may. Uh, first of all, did everybody get the uh, information that I sent to Betsy for distribution? I'm just going to keep going yes, on yes. the assumption so that you might have or you might not have, but I'll try to. We've all been on email. I'll try to summarize it for you. Um, first off, um, the comments by TJ were talking about the off street parking. So what I tried to provide to you was our site plan. And as I mentioned in my narrative that it uh, accompanied my site plan, um, there's two lots there. One of the lots has parking for four to six cars on the driveway. Seventh Street in front of it, as TJ pointed out, is in fact striped off, no parking allowed, good decision. Um, the other lot on the corner is uh, Pine Street. Um, that lot 
uh, we made it actually wider so we could get two cars on that uh, driveway. Uh, and so within the sidewalk and the uh, house itself, we can fit two cars. And then if you did get my email, you will see the a couple of the images from Google Earth, uh, which indicate that there's some uh, on-street parking on Pine Street that appears to have been used in the past. I don't know if it's two cars or four cars, but I think uh, I think there is, in fact, adequate parking. Um, it fits in with the neighborhood as staff recommended or pointed out. And I'd like to say that uh, I am a member of the Habitat Board. Uh, Colleen was the other lady uh, who, who uh, chimed in as a petitioner. Um, I happen to know both Dylan and Tamika, who will be the uh, two residents who will move into these houses. And I think this is a perfect fit for this area. Thank you. Commissioners, you have questions for the petitioners, either Ms. Stone or Mr. Martin? Seeing none, I'll close the public portion of the discussion and open the floor for uh, discussion amongst the commissioners or entertain a motion. Make a motion to accept the recommendation of staff. A second. Com uh, Commissioner Wood makes a recommendation to accept the motion of the staff, seconded by Commissioner Kruger. Please call the roll. Commissioner Stauffer. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Wolford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Very good. You have another meeting just like this on May the 19th at 530 in these chambers. And unless otherwise notified. Thank you. Thank you. Docket number 2020-011-4351 Yuckton Drive. Are you in the house? Gordon Gates. Gordon, am I saying that right? It's you can. Oh, okay. Very good. Uh, Gordon, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Very good. Um, I'd like to have the staff read the report, please. Okay. The requested zoning is S3 Central Shopping District, Section 155.032. In prior zoning proceedings regarding Lot 5 of the subdivision, docket number 2012-59, the City of Springfield imposed limits on such relief such that building height is restricted to 50 feet. Petitioner accepts that limit regarding the relief sought in the current petition as regards to Lot Two, uh, the proposed land use is marketing the property for various possible uses, including multiple family residences and retail and restaurant businesses. It is, ex it is likely that the subject property will be used for a residential development containing 15 duplexes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> The existing zoning is B1 Highway Business Service District Section 155.033. The existing land use is vacant. The road frontage along Archer Elevator is 230.27 feet. The condition of pavement is good. The road frontage along UCAN is approximately 36.20 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The lot area is approximately 116,740.8 square feet or 2.68 acres. Would the proposed zoning be spot zoning? No. Is the proposed zoning in accord with the city plan? Yes. Staff recommends approval as submitted provided that the building height is restricted to 50 feet on lot two. The city plan contemplates commercial uses on the subject property, which would be allowed in the proposed classification as well as office service and a variety of residential uses. Although S3 is generally acceptable in heavily developed uh, central business areas. Two previous zoning cases, 2015-7 and 2012-59, granted S3 in this immediate area. Furthermore, the petition notes, quote, petitioner desires to market the subject property for various possible uses, which would include multiple family residences and retail and restaurant businesses. It is likely that the subject property will be used for residential development containing 15 duplexes, end quote. Duplexes are not an appropriate use in the B1 district as this district contemplates more vehicular oriented businesses which are more appropriately located closer to Wabash Avenue. Provided the area bounded by UCAN, Meadowbrook, Archer Elevator, and the southern boundary of Cobblestone Estates 4th edition is the limits of S3, staff finds the requested S3 zoning appropriate due to the previous zoning cases granting it in the area in 2012 and 2015. End of report. 
Uh, before I continue, uh, uh, TJ, sorry, um, I meant to ask if there are any objectors. I apologize. Are there any objectors? Okay, go ahead, TJ. I recommend that if the S3 zoning is approved, that considerations to parking requirements be included and that the provision in the zoning ordinance that eliminates the requirements for off-street parking in the S3 not be applied to this parcel. That verbiage is stated in the ordinance with the intention that the S3 be reserved for those developments which, quote, occupy prime retail frontage in a centrally and intensely developed business area and where nearly all the frontage has been taken up by contiguous buildings, thus requiring different bulb regulations than those applicable to newer or less concentrated areas and making it virtually impossible for separate off-street parking facility to be provided for each individual establishment, end quote. As that definition does not apply to this area, standard parking requirements should be applied as if the proposed zoning were an S1 or S2 use. Okay, very good. And uh, Mr. Gates, before we proceed, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you should have in your packet a couple of emails from the Cobblestone uh, Homeowners Association uh, that bear looking at uh, pertinent to this, this uh, case. Otherwise, uh, Mr. Gates, you have a positive staff recommendation. Is there anything you'd like to add? Not a thing. Very good. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions for the petitioner at this time? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and open the floor to a discussion among the commissioners or entertain a motion. Move to accept staff recommendation. Second. second. Motion by Commissioner Strom, seconded by, I'm sorry, who was that seconded? By Commissioner Graven to accept the staff recommendation. Please call the roll. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Wolford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stauffer. Yes. Very good. Do you have another meeting just like this on City Council night, May 19th? It's Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Thank you, folks. And I hope you're there in, in, in real uh, this time. Thank you, Gordon. You bet. Uh, See you guys. Docket number, sorry, 2020-012-1921, et cetera, Washington Street, 1926 Clear Lake Avenue. Are you in the house? Yes, sir. Where, where are you? I'm sorry. I, I missed you. Council for Petitioner Universal Properties of Illinois and WC Media. Creighton Castle. I'm here with Joe Malik representing the companies. Okay. Do you guys uh, promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Very good. Do we have objectors to this case? Yes, I'm here. And tell us your name and what city you're from. Charlotte Brickler with Brickler Collision. In Springfield? In Springfield, uh-huh. Ms. Brickler, you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Very good. Uh, I'm going to have the staff read the case. Okay. The, it's a conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.341C, height and size regulations for off-premise signs to permit two off-premise signs consisting of 672 square feet per sign for a total of 1,344 square feet instead of 175 square feet per sign and a height of 65 feet instead of the 35 feet allowed per code. Various section 155.001 definitions lot and section 155.340H general provisions for off-premise signs to allow two principal uses on a lot, the existing commercial building and billboard structure section 155.320 permitted accessory on premise signs so that if the proposed premise is considered one zoning lot to permit the billboard structure to be located within 100 feet of the two ground signs currently located on the proposed premises same zoning lot section 155.321 a non-illuminated signs to permit the total ground signage on the property to exceed 120 square feet if the proposed premises is one zoning lot otherwise 40 square feet for lot three of proposed premises section 155.325 a and c height of signs to permit an off-premise sign in the i1 district at a height of 65 feet instead 
instead of the 40 feet allowed, section 135.340B, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs uh, to be within 500 feet of another off-premise sign on the same side of the street, i.e. Clear Lake Avenue, section 155.340C, so that if lots two and four of the proposed premises are not part of the same zoning lot as lot three of the proposed premises, to permit a setback from the property line, of the proposed premises of less than 15 feet from the east and west property line, section 155.340D, to permit the billboard structure to be located within 500 feet of a lot, which is owned residential or on a lot used for residential purposes, section 155.340E, to permit two off-premise signs on the proposed premises, uh, section 155.340I3 to permit the proposed monopole to be devoid of a decorative panels or bases. Section 155.340I6 to permit the number of sign faces to be more than one face per location. Section 155.340J to allow the issuance of one building permit to install one monopole billboard structure with two off-premise sign faces on lot three of the proposed premises without surrendering permits on a four for one basis. And section 155.341A to permit an off-premise sign in the I-1 district and to permit a sign of 672 square feet per sign face for a total of 1,344 square feet instead of 175 square feet per sign and a height of 65 feet instead of the 35 feet allowed. The proposed land use is a building used for storage, two ground signs and a billboard. The existing zoning is I-1 Light Industrial District, section 155.040. The existing land use is a building used for storage and two ground signs. The road frontage along Washington is 120 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The road frontage along Clear Lake is 120 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. Structure is designed for a restaurant. The condition of the structure is fair. The lot area is approximately 11,559.6 square feet. The front yard of the proposed sign will have a, a setback of 32.63 feet. We'll have a west side setback of 7.56 feet. The east side setback for the sign will be 14.54 feet. And the proposed rear setback for the sign will be 16.27 uh, feet. Staff recommends approval as submitted. The petition indicates the petitioner is proposing to move a single one stack, two faced, 14 feet by 48 feet, 672 square feet each face, 1,344 square feet total, non-digital billboard approximately 307 feet to the east. In addition, the petitioner proposes to replace the outdated halogen bulbs which shine on the billboard with more modern LED bulbs, light bulbs which will shine on the new sign in a way that the lighting does not spill over to adjoining properties or the right of way. The sign height and area will remain the same as the existing billboard. Uh, due to the industrial area in which the sign is located and the sign being adjacent to the Clear Lake overpass, it is felt the move billboard will have a minimal impact over existing conditions. The other existing ground signs on the subject property or for an older restaurant that no longer exists and will have a minimal impact on the area over existing conditions. The standards for variation are met. Traffic engineer. As the proposed billboard will be facing Clear Lake Avenue, the owner will be required to obtain a permit from IDOT to follow all IDOT rules and regulations. Very good. Uh, Mr. Castle, you have a positive staff recommendation, but you also have an objector. Is there anything you'd like to share with us? Are you talking to me? No, petitioner. I have nothing to add, but I'm, well, <coughs> nothing, nothing to add. Very good. It, it, uh, then we'll hear from Ms. Brickler, who's the op, uh, opponent here. Go okay, the, the billboard has sat on our property for over 20 years. Um, Mr. Giacomini, is, WC Media, is wanting to remove that and replace it over there, the old Bianco's restaurant, which is right directly east of our um, body shop. It's not a body shop any longer, but we do still run a towing business. Um, if he erects a new billboard right there, it would obstruct. I have every intention of leasing out that property to another advertising company to uh, erect another billboard. If he erects a new billboard to the proposed site, it would block the view of a, a billboard on the property that's already zoned for it, which it would, um, reduce the rental value of the property that we have. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It would reduce the, the value of the property that we have and uh, impact the value of our real estate quite a bit. So I, I respectfully request that you deny the, uh, the variant zoning. 
Okay, very good. Uh, commissioners, do we have uh, questions for either the petitioner or the objector here, please? I, I have a question, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, if I remember, uh, this is um, Commissioner uh, Goodman can answer this. I think it wasn't back sometime that they passed the ordinance that you could only have a certain billboards and certain heights and certain location. Uh, was this not a piece of the property that was included? So you're asking that of the professional staff, Mr. Johnson, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, there was a CPU issued for the, uh, the property for the billboard to be constructed. So did you catch that, Commissioner for Johnson? For height, for the height of it. Th there were a CPU issue for that? Yes, for the height. I didn't hear him. Yes, there was a, a conditional permitted use issued for the height of the of the sign. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Like Do we have a standard for how many billboards can be within each the distance between uh, billboards? In other words, she's objecting because she wants to keep, I guess, the one that's there or similar one that's already approved on her property. Correct. And uh, the petitioner is asking to have another one placed nearby. I Do we, the city, have a standard that says we can only have billboards within a certain number of feet uh, from each other? I believe the request is to remove the billboard and replace it onto the other lot. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, isn't she telling us that this is on her property? WC Media wants to remove that and and place it over there in the old Bianco's parking lot to, directly east of us. So that's not your billboard? It's not my billboard. Oh. It's my property that's already zoned for a billboard. I would like to rent it out to another advertising company to erect another billboard. In which case you would have this the space problem that Commissioner Strom is, is right. uh, stating. Correct. With all due respect, I don't see how her uh, concern about uh, the, her property has anything to do with our standards of variation that we're uh, applying for here. I mean, she can do with her property what is legally permissible and uh, someone down the road, uh, 500 feet down the road can erect the billboard too. So, um, I mean, we're here to discuss the uh, petition and uh, we believe we have met the standards of variation. And uh, I think that uh, doesn't say anything about the plight of the non-surviving owner. It talks about the uh, the plight of the owner and that is as Jerry Stasikinas' Stas property. Other questions for the petitioner or the objector? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the staff. Uh, Mr. Harris, do you know the date of that conditional community use for the height of the sign? No, I do not have that on me at the moment. Um, I think the uh, CPU was, uh, perhaps before the 2001 zoning rewrite um, because the size of the billboard signage um, before they changed the signage regulations, the CPU wasn't about signage on the lot, it was about the height, 99. 99. Okay, yeah, prior to 2000, there was not the restriction as to the number of billboards or the proximity of, to others. It was in that timeline, about 2000, where the 500 foot spacing requirement. Additionally, um, the way the laws are written regarding billboards, it's my understanding that they are not recognized as real property and not taxed. Uh, and so it's really, the billboard doesn't really add value to your property and it's not a tax item, if, uh, as it were. Um, if the billboard is owned by WC, uh, then I think they probably have the right to remove it. And that may put you in a particular situation because the other billboards nearby would prohibit the department from issuing uh, 
uh, a permit. You'd probably have to go through this process uh, seeking relief to have a billboard within X number of feet of other billboards. Other questions for the petitioner or the, or the objector? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public portion of the uh, of the discussion and open the floor to the commissioners uh, for further discussion or a entertain a motion. Make a motion that we accept the recommendation of staff. Motion by Commissioner Wood to accept the recommendation. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Second by Commissioner Kruger, who I, I get to see Commissioner Kruger in stereo, by the way. Cool. Uh, please call the roll. Commissioner Wolford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Uh, yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stauffer. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Charlie Commission Stratton. He's frozen again. <laughs> His bandwidth is low. I'm just saying Stratton? that on the screen. Is that a yes or a no? Charlie Stratton? Oh, yeah. I, I, you're, the audio is cutting out constantly, so if you're calling my name, I can't hear you. Yes. 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 Okay, very good. Uh, so, petitioners, you have another meeting just like this on uh, City Council night, Tuesday, May the 19th at 530 in the Council Chambers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are now done with March. Wasn't that exciting? Yeah. In like a lion, <laughs> out like a lamb. Here we go, April. <laughs> 2020 013, 1035 North MacArthur Boulevard. Are you in the house? Matthew Kate, uh, Barbara Sagato, Hoffie Wilkin Kate, and I believe my client is on a different connection. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Is that I'm Mr. Here. Pettit? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, gentlemen, tell us your name and what city you're from. Matthew Cage, Springfield, Illinois. Greg Pettit, Springfield, Illinois. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. No. And I believe we have an objector on this case? Yes. Yes, and tell, tell us your name and what city you're from. Uh, Franny Kempesty, Springfield, Illinois. Could you spell your last name, please? K-E-M-P-I-S-T-Y. And Ms. Uh, Kempestry, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Very good. And I'm going to have the staff read the report, please. The requested zoning is to amend docket number 2002-18 to provide for an enlargement and extension of a nonconforming use to modify the language, quote, with the condition that the area close, cease operation at 10 p.m. and there be no outdoor music or speakers, with the modification being to allow persons to traverse from the, traver the tavern area into the game room area, which is an approximately 18-foot distance between the two areas after the 10 p.m. closing with no other changes to the previous restriction. Various section 155.153 enlargement or extension and section 155. 5.156 requirement for approval of enlargement or extension to allow an enlargement and extension in a residential district in areas identified on exhibit A as garage area game room, which is an approximately 920 square foot area, section 155.156A to allow an enlargement to exceed 125% of the area occupied by the nonconforming use on July 22, 1966, and section 155.156C to allow the extension without increasing the accessory off street parking spaces. The proposed land use is a tavern with beer garden and video gaming. Uh, the existing zoning is R2 single family and duplex residence district section 155.017. The existing land use is a tavern with beer garden and video gaming. The road frontage along MacArthur is 80 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The road frontage along Elliott is 120 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The structure is designed for commercial. The condition of the structure is good. The lot area is 9,600 square feet. The front yard is approximately 38 feet. The north side yard is approximately 0 to 3 feet. The south side yard is approximately 0 to 2 feet. And the rear yard is approximately 0 to 1 feet. 
Staff recommends denial. Staff has concerns with the proposed expansion of the tavern in close proximity to a residence, door-to-door -door distance approximately 40 feet with no separation other than a fence. There's great potential for noise and other problems that can be more detrimental to the character of the area than in existing conditions. Further, staff has concerns the proposed expansion slash extension will be difficult to monitor, particularly late at night after 10 p.m. as proposed by the petitioner. End of report. Traffic engineer. <clears throat> Recommend denial to the petition. Any increase in business area without an increase to the off-street parking is not recommended as it will result in further on-street parking within a residential neighborhood. Furthermore, the exhibit provided shows a 32-foot parking lot along Elliott Avenue with both the dimension and the description are inaccurate. The area is not a parking lot, but is part of the street right-of-way. Per section 79.03 of the city traffic code, vehicles are only to park in a parallel manner along the street. Additionally, the existing parking area on the MacArthur side is a non-conforming status in which vehicles must back out onto MacArthur. Until the existing site can be brought up to current standards, further expansion is not recommended. Very good. Um, so, gentlemen, you have a negative uh, staff report. Um, I'd like to hear from you and then I'll hear from the objectors. And Ms. Kempistry, uh, we do have a copy of your your uh, your objection in writing as well, just so you know that. Uh, so, uh, commissioners, if you want to refer to that when she comes on the phone here shortly. Um, so I'll, I'll turn the floor over to the petitioners. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Matthew Cade on behalf of uh, the petitioner, Greg Pettin. I know Greg is going to want to speak briefly as well. Uh, to expand kind of on some of the issues brought off by the, the staff recommendation of denial. Several points uh, there. The concerns that's raised by the staff in terms of the increases of noise, uh, the separation, the uh, and the the issues of the no increase in parking uh, brought up by the engineer. Right now, what they're attempting to do is have the uh, garage area, for lack of a better term, be able to be used for a pool or for darts. What this is is simply uh, trying to use, utilize this area, which can't be utilized right now other than for storage, in terms of making the current patrons happy. This is something the current patrons have been asking for to be able to do. Uh, it's not, we do not anticipate actually uh, more people coming. This is a, a, a neighborhood uh, style of tavern. It, it, this is never going to be the type of tavern drawing large crowds or large groups um, from the area. This is simply to try to keep the current clientele and patrons happy so that, um, so a couple and, and a couple things on that to be able to open, reopen, I should say, once the global pandemic ends, uh, that they, this, this same people who are going there before can come back to this neighborhood bar. Um, uh, Mr. Pedal will be able to stress that as well. There's six different um, part-time staff um, and he's trying to keep them employed and be able to reopen and they're hoping that the current patrons will come back and be able to do not only just the normal conversing and, and drinking at the neighborhood tavern but also now to be able to utilize something they've been asking for which is the uh, pool and the uh, darts i know that the staff also mentioned the concern they had with the difficulty in monitoring uh, the walking over to that area after 10 o'clock at night the only point I'd had on that would just simply be that that's not necessarily a zoning issue. That'd be more of a police or a law enforcement portion of that issue. Um, no different than they currently would have right now with policing it after that time period. Uh, I'd obviously be happy to answer any other questions. And I know uh, Greg would, would could expand on some of that as well. Go ahead, Mr. Pettit, if you'd like to say uh, a few things before I turn it over to the objector and the petitioners, or rather yes, the commissioner. I'd like to say that uh, if it was reopened, that they walk across the deck, which is enclosed to the, the garage area where they play pool. And uh, so the noise level would be uh, would be down. Uh, we're just, just trying to stay in business and uh, stay afloat and give the customers what they want. And as far as the parking, uh, we, we've got off street park and I know there's been some problems, a little problems with the neighbor next door and we try to address those when we can. And uh, sometimes people don't know the proper way to park. So she gives us a call and we try to have them, their cars moving. 
And other than that, there's quite two blocks of Wall Street Park in there, I think it would accommodate. But like I say, we don't expect a bunch of new customers. We're just trying to trying to keep the ones we got so we don't go under. Okay, very good. Uh, Ms. Kempesty, would you like to say a few words? And we do have your, your, uh, your statement on file as well. Well, thank you. I also wanted to thank everybody who helped me to be able to talk and call in tonight because it was a little confusing. And people really double checked many times back with me. So I really want to say what a spectacular job everyone did. It was really great. Um, okay, part of my issue with this whole thing is that I have stopped calling the police when they're on the beer garden at night, smoking and drinking, because I want the police to show up when I need help at my house, because I am not a real healthy person. Uh, the parking issue still exists, and if you look at the thing that I sent you, um, this is very hard to describe unless you're actually here and can see it. If you pull to the end of my driveway, they park straight in, so it's parallel to my driveway into the fence that separates my property from um, Greg's. And then they park right in front of my house like anybody would on street parking. So it's like a T-bone effect, if you can imagine that. And then they park so close to my driveway or into my driveway, both cars, whether it's the one that's you know parking into the fence or the one that's parking in front of my house. So I cannot even get out of my driveway. And um, I really fear for getting medical assistance, you know, with an ambulance and that type of thing, because they are called to my house periodically. And that's always been my biggest fear is that, I, you know, someone can't come in to get, get help for me. And then with the, he says it won't increase people going in there, but it does. It increases the noise. There's no sufficient parking around us whatsoever. And if you look at the thing that I sent you, I sent you a picture that's taken from my kitchen window of how he has the beer garden encased. So there's a door that they can walk in and out of that faces my house. On the east, it's the east side of my house, the west side of their property. And then next to it, someone cut out a big square, and during the summertime, they put a fan in there, which pushes all the smoke that's within that beer garden, because that's what people do. They go out there to smoke and drink, and it pushes it into my house. I have window air conditioners on the east side of my house, and it draws that smoke in, because for some reason, they cut that hole in the fencing there that encases the beer garden, which I've never really understood. And when I talked to the zoning people, they told me to take a picture and show it. I know the picture is not the greatest, but that's from my kitchen window. And you can see a bar stool through the square where they cut it out and they insert the, the fan that blows the smoke into my place. Yes, we see that. Now, yeah. So I know it's not a great picture. I'm really sorry about it. It's the best I could do. Now, one of the things when the original zoning came through with Mr. Coonrod, uh, with Jim and Stephanie, they built that garage for Stephanie's SUV. Uh, Ms. Ms. Capistry, sorry, we're, okay. we, we, need to, we need to keep the testimony limited to the petition in front of us. You've done an excellent right, and job. Right, about that garage. You I was told it on, would never on, be used for business usage. It would always remain personal, which is why I didn't contest anything when they did the zoning change. Okay. And you've done an excellent job laying out those items, uh, but I want to stick yeah. to the petition and okay. not revisit the whole case. Right, and, I want to and give then Mr. that's the other issue that I have is, there's no way to police what goes on between on that beer garden after 10 o'clock. And like Street. I said, I have stopped calling the police because I'm not the police and I don't want to police it, Fair even enough. though it's a negative impact to me. Then let's, so let's if let... they're going to improve the zoning for that garage, why can't they walk in front of the, of the bar? 
Ms. Kempstreet, so those are good points. I'm going to give the petitioner a chance to respond to those, and then we'll have okay. commissioners ask questions. Uh, thank so, you. Yes, yeah, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mr. Kate or Mr. Pettit, would you like to respond to those, please? It, yes, I'd like to respond to the, the reason we cut the hole on the, uh, that we have the, the beer garden pretty much enclosed, the deck, snap, actually a beer, kind of a beer garden, but the reason we enclosed it was cut down on the no noise area. And we cut that hole in the back part of that fence because in the summertime, it gets so hot out there. I got a great big circular fan I put out there, but it's not pointed towards her house. It's pointed towards the deck to keep the patrons cool. It draws the air from the uh, open area in between the house and the tavern to cool the patrons. And the reason the door is there is in case the elderly fellow that stays in the apartment has to get in the tavern for an emergency or something. That's the only reason it's there. And it's got a push uh, push lock system on it to get out. Okay, very good. If I just might have one small feature, I, I believe that Greg would be open to the idea if it would help the objector uh, to installing no parking signs or something of that nature to make it more clear where there is not supposed to be parking or what style of parking there should be if that would help um, alleviate some of the parking issues that are currently going on. We don't anticipate an expansion of the parking, but just to try to alleviate um, those concerns of the objector. If the city, excuse me, if the city would allow it, I'd be glad to put up a no parking sign in front of a place so she made it easier to get in and out. Traffic engineer, can you comment on that or is that outside the scope of this meeting? That would be outside the scope of this meeting. It's something we could evaluate based on request outside of this. Okay, very good. Uh, commissioners, do you have questions for the petitioner or the objectors? Commissioners? Very good. In that event, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and open the floor to the commissioners only for uh, uh, discussion or motion. I move to accept the staff recommendation. Second. Motion by Commissioner Strom, seconded by Commissioner Gooden to accept the staff recommendation <clears throat> recommending denial. Please call the roll. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stauffer. Jeff, Jeff Stauffer. I think you're muted. Uh, yes. Jeff. Sorry, I was on mute. I apologize. Is that a yes, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Wolford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Graven? Yes. So uh, your petition uh, fails, but you have another chance to convince the City Council on May the 19th at 5.30 p.m. right here in City Council Chambers or on your favorite Zoom channel. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for attending. And uh, props to IT for helping Ms. Kempstreet get loaded up. 2020-014, uh, five Forest Ridge Lane. Are you in the house? Kristen Johnson with Barbara Segato, Hoppy Wolfie and Kate. And uh, ma'am, could you spell your name? K-R-I-S-T-E-N and then Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. -O okay. And John and Jerry Hollander here. Okay. And do we have uh, objectors? Uh, yes, Ted Meckes from City Water, Light, and Power. Okay, very good. And uh, would you all please raise your right hand and promise to tell the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Outstanding. I do. So, uh, Steve, if you'd read the staff report, please. 
Yes, the requested zoning is to vary the lake land use plan appendix A, section nine docks to allow the dock structures to a maximum point of approximately 55 feet from the shoreline at normal full pool elevation instead of the 35 feet allowed. The proposed land use is a residence with two docks in excess of 35 feet. The existing zoning is R1 single family residence district section 155.016. The existing land use is a residence with two docks in excess of 35 feet. The road frontage is approximately 118.5 feet. The condition of the pavement is good. The condition of the structure, or the, excuse me, the uh, structure is designed for a residence. The condition of the structure is good. The lot area is approximately 41,682 square feet. The front yard is approximately 107 feet. The north side yard is approximately 23 feet. The south side yard is approximately 23 feet. And the rear yard is approximately 163 feet. Staff recommends approval limited to the existing two dock structures. The petition asserts the lake is shallow in this location for a boat lift. Staff was not able to ascertain the lake depth due to lack of evidence submitted. The subject property is located along a long, narrow cove. Staff notes the lake <coughs> land use plan appendix A contemplates allowing docks and narrow coves where approximately 50% of the cove is open boat passage. Section 9 states, quote, in narrow bays less than 100 feet across, no docks or similar structure shall extend more than one-fourth the distance across the bay. If there are two structures each 25 feet across, this would leave approximately 50 feet or 50% of the bay open for a less than 100 foot bay or cove. In this case, the cove is approximately 220 to 240 feet across at the subject property. There's approximately 100 to 105 feet between the dock structures on the property and 53 orchard immediately to the west of the subject property across the bay. This leaves approximately 52% of the cove still open for boats to traverse. There's some plight due to the code if similar circumstances for coves wider than 100 feet do not apply the same as for those coves less than 100 feet, the standards for variation of that and the report. Traffic engineer? I have no comment. Very good. Uh, folks, you have a positive staff recommendation and we're happy to hear from you, but we're also gonna hear from the uh, uh, opposition. So uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you'd like to do and we'll go from there. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Um, John and Teresa, feel free to chime in, but I believe um, we also share the same sentiment as the um, uh, Planning Commission's report and as well as our position being outlined in the uh, petition we submitted. Okay, very good. Hollins, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to add that that dock system has been in place since 1996. We've never had any complaints from any of our neighboring cove mates or any problems. This whole variance um, thing was brought up because we we're anticipating of selling the house in two years and did not want to run into any problem when we try to sell the house. Fair enough. Yeah. Mr. Meckes? Well, that was my question is if, if they're at, because right now it's at 50 feet and if they're asking for, or 50, if they're asking for five more feet, we'd object, but since it's been in place, we're fine. And nothing I, nothing's I mean, changed since 1996. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're good. So, Ted, you're Thank withdrawing you. your objection at this point? Yes. Okay, very good. So, uh, folks, you have a positive staff recommendation. And uh, commissioners, are, do you have any questions for the petitioners? None being heard. I'm going to uh, close the public portion and open the floor to the commissioners for a, a uh, recommendation. Uh, in motion. Make a motion that we accept the recommendation of staff. Second. Motion by Commissioner Wood, seconded by Commissioner Johnson. Please call the roll. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stopper. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Woodford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Very good. Well, you have a positive uh, result and you have another hearing just like this on Tuesday, May the 19th at 5.30 p.m. here on Zoom Channel 1. Thank We'd you. like to thank everybody. Thank you. And just right down here, right? Uh, time out for just a second. Uh, Mr. Harris, or what are we doing with 2121 Noble? Are we going forward or are we continuing? No, didn't, didn't we make the motion to Oh, no, we made continue. the motion. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's we right. voted. I beg your pardon. Put it to right. Yeah. Month. So, next it's, month get, month. it's getting late. Yes. <laughs> and it's going to get late. And I got, I got my nap today, but uh, it wasn't sufficient. 
obviously. So we're going to skip to uh, case 2020-016, 1715, 17, 19 South 2nd Street. Uh, are those folks uh, on the call? Yes, yes sir. Phil Martin. <laughs> Phil Martin, tonight is your night. Uh, and Colleen um, is here. And Colleen, tonight's your night as well. Well done. Uh, are there objectors to this call? Well, not to the call, rather, <laughs> to the case. <laughs> I know there's a lot of objectors to the call. Very good. Uh, would you raise your right hand and just recall that you're under oath? I won't swear you in again. Very good. I Steve, do. Please read the report. Thank you. Okay. The requested zoning is R2 single family duplex residence district section 155.017. The proposed land use is three single family residences. The existing zoning is S1 neighborhood commun uh, commercial and office district section 155.030. The existing land use is vacant. The road frontage is 40 feet. The conditions of pavement is good. The lot area is 18,000 square feet. Would the proposed zoning be spot zoning? No. Is the proposed zoning in accord with the city plan? Yes. Staff recommends approval. The requested rezoning to R2 is in accord with the city plan and will allow the petitioner to construct three single-family residences on three separate parcels. End of report. Traffic engineer. Uh, single-family housing is typical of the neighborhood properties. Anything, higher, anything with a higher density than a single-family is not recommended. Okay, so uh, Mr. Martin, Ms. Jones, do you have a positive uh, staff recommendation? Is there anything you'd like to add? No, sir. Very good. Uh, commissioners, uh, the floor is yours to ask questions of the petitioners or to entertain a motion. I move to recommend approval as staff president. Okay. A second. Okay, uh, motion by Commissioner Graven, second by Commissioner Christian. Please call the roll. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stauffer. Yes. Commissioner Stratton? Yes. Commissioner Wooford? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Craven? Yes. Commissioner Gooden? Yes. Commissioner Wood? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Okay, so you have a, uh, a positive uh, recommendation and you have another meeting just like this city council on May the 19th at 5.30. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just re 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 uh, recall that the Colby Avenue case uh, 2020 has been withdrawn. And so we're going to go to 2020 -018. 2625, etc., Chatham Road. Uh, the petitioners uh, uh, here. Greg Scrow for the petitioner. And any objectors? Okay, Mr. Scrow, you're from Springfield? Yes. Please uh, raise your right hand. You promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Very good. And uh, we'll have the staff read the report, please. The requested zoning is con a conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.031, conditional permitted uses in S2, and section 155.200, conditional permitted uses taverns, and section 155.210, conditional permitted use package liquor sales to allow tavern and package liquor sales. Vary section 155.200 and section 155.210 to allow a tavern and package liquor sales to be located less than 100 feet from the nearest lot on which there is a residence or a residential zoning lot. The proposed land use is to allow Allow the corkscrew wine emporium a tavern with packaged liquor sales to relocate to the space immediately south of that in which it is currently located in the existing strip mall the existing zoning is s2 community shopping and office district section 155.031 the existing land use is a strip mall the road frontage along montana is approximately 282 feet the condition of pavement is good the road frontage along chatham is approximately 240 feet the condition of the pavement is good structure is designed for a strip mall the condition of the structure is good the lot area is approximately 67,518 square feet the front yard is 137 feet the north 
north side yard is approximately six feet, the south side yard is approximately zero feet, and the rear yard is approximately 50 feet. Staff recommends approval of the requested conditional permitted uses with the following conditions. One, the Tavern and Package Liquor Store, limited tenant space is 2625-2629 Chatham Road. Two, hours of operation for the Tavern and the Package Liquor Store shall be limited to the city liquor license. Three, no live entertainment, and four, no outside seating. Recommend approval of the requested variances while the lot line of the parcel containing the strip mall is adjacent to a duplex lot line. The principal customer entrance for the business will be in excess of 100 feet from the duplex lot line, being approximately 140 feet away. The standards for variation are met. End of report. Traffic engineer. No comment. Uh, Mr. Scro, you have a positive staff recommendation. Is there anything you'd like to add before we uh, call for discussion and vote? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Regrettably, we do have a problem with one of the four conditions sought. If I may briefly describe what's happening here, INB is to the north of the corkscrew. The corkscrew's been in operation since 2001. Pizza Hut was to the south. Pizza Hut moved out. INB said to its neighbor, would you scoot down? Mr. and Mrs. Anderson said, of course, we'd be happy to do that. But then they learned they need to reiterate the zoning they have. They're not seeking to do anything differently. They're seeking to continue the operation as they have. But one of the four conditions is no live entertainment. While there's no desire to bring in Twinkles the Clown, they have over the years had music usually associated with a fundraiser. They've had four fundraisers in the past couple of years. The charities have been good charities. The boy, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Rescue Ranch, a horse farm for children with disabilities, Central Illinois Autism Support, and the outlet Mentoring Boys with Fathers. They've had Adrian Russo perform. He is a wonderful keyboard player and does have a small amplifier. And they've also had a jazz trio perform, which I've not seen, but I understand they're not very loud. If the concern is the residence that's behind, the duplex that's behind them, they're actually moving further away from that use. So really what we're saying here is we'd like you to remove that condition. We're happy with everything else. So hopefully you can see your way clear of that. Commissioners, discussion? I have one question um, to the petitioner. Is the, is the live entertainment outside, is, or has it always been indoors? Always indoors, and we would agree to that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Commissioner Wolford, would you like to make a uh, motion with that as an amendment to the staff recommendation? Um, yes, if, I, if, if that's possible to, um, I don't know what, you, so you don't stick me here now. So I would, would I just change the staff recommendation? Yeah, your motion would be to approve the staff recommendation with the exception of item four, or excuse me, with, with the exception of item three, which would be to allow live entertainment inside uh, the facility. Okay, you said it. That's, that's it. <laughs> so that's your motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wood. Please call the roll. Commissioner Stauffer. Commissioner Stauffer. Yes. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Wolford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Very good. You have another hearing just like this on Tuesday the 19th at 530. And uh, cheers to you and your client. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, next item is docket number 2020-019, parcel 1-64, excuse me, parcel 1, 6420 South, 6th Street, Frontage Road East, etc. I'm assuming that's you, Mr. Segato, is representing those folks? Yes, and uh, Mr. Wilmarth, I believe, is also uh, uh, on the, on the uh, Zoom here. Oh, I am, great. Bernie, thank you. And uh, would you please raise your right hand? You promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Very good. I'll have the staff read the report, please. The requested zoning is B1 Highway Business Service District, Section 155.033. If reclassification is not afforded, petitioners request consideration for a use variance to allow mini storage in the R5B zoning district. The proposed land use is mini storage units. The existing zoning is R5B, General Residence and Office District, Section 155.021. The existing land use for Parcel 1 is vacant. The existing land use for Parcel 2 is a residence and a garage. The road frontage along South 6th Street is approximately 300 feet. The condition of pavement is good. The road frontage along Sherrill Woods is approximately 93 feet. The condition of pavement is good. The structure is designed for a residence and garage. The condition of the structure is good. The lot area is approximately 90,618.73 square feet. The front yard is approximately 141.5 feet. The north side yard is approximately 72 feet. The south side yard is approximately 4 feet. And the rear yard is approximately 118 feet. Would the proposed zoning be spot zoning? Yes. Is the proposed zoning in accord with the city plan? No. If not in accord, is the request an acceptable variation? No. Staff recommends denial of the requested B1 zoning. Due to the office service designation in the city plan, staff believes the requested B1 zoning is too intense and represents inappropriate spot zoning. However, due to the historical trend to granting use variances in the area, staff believes a use variance is appropriate. Therefore, staff recommends approval of a use variance in the R5B district to allow mini storage units, provided no outside storage and no chemical storage are allowed as stated in the petition. End of report. Traffic engineer. Uh, no exception taken to the petition as submitted. It is noted that no access is shown to Cheryl Wood Drive. Access should be restricted to Cheryl Wood as it is primarily used for residential access and should be maintained as such. Very good. So Mr. Uh, Sagato and Mr. Wilmarth, you have a negative, you have a denial of your B1, but uh, a recommended uh, use variance. Is anything you'd like to discuss as part of that before I turn you over to our Cracker Jack commissioners? No, the, uh, the, the staff recommendation is acceptable to the petitioner. Very good. Commissioners, you have questions for the petitioners? I have a question for staff. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, regarding the storage of chemicals. You know, if I'm a private homeowner and I have a swimming pool, I want to store my pool chemicals, or if I change the oil in my own car, I might have oils, I might have other solvents or chemicals associated with maintaining my residence. Do you intend to prohibit those? The request was stated in the petition that they would not allow, they wouldn't allow chemical storage, so we're just trying to keep them uh, to that particular standard that they had asserted in the petition. That, that'll be put in our leases. No chemical storage. Yes, that's correct. Right. Uh, I have another question uh, actually for the traffic engineer. The last sentence in your recommendation says access should be restricted to Sherwood or from Sherwood. It should be restricted with no access to Sherwood. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for the petitioners? Seeing none, I'm gonna close the public portion of the meeting and open the floor to discussion among the commissioners and or entertain a motion. Make a motion we accept the recommendation of staff. Second. Motion by Commissioner Wood, I'm sorry, who seconded? Johnson. Commissioner Johnson seconded. Please call the roll. Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Commissioner Wilford. Commissioner Wilford. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner Stauffer. Yes. 
Very good. Uh, gentlemen, you have a meeting just like this in front of the City Council on Tuesday, May 19th at 5.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Good luck. Yeah, thanks for putting this together. You betcha. I have two more, actually three more items, uh, folks. If you'll look at your agenda, we have docket number 202020, which is an amendment to Chapter 155 you, with respect to uh, premise on-site premise consumption of adult use cannabis. And, uh, and then we have another one, 2021, that is, uh, deals with adding adult use craft growers. So I'd like you to look at those for a minute and I'm gonna have staff read through those. Do you want me to read 20 and 21 or just 20 at this point? I'm sorry, read one at a time. Okay. Yeah, just read yeah, 20. Okay. Uh, for case 2020, staff recommends approval. The proposed amendment adds a non-premise consumption area in conjunction with an adult use cannabis dispensary as a conditional permitted use CPU in the B1 and B2 districts. Currently, this use is a CPU in S3, I1, and I2. The inclusion of a non-premise consumption area as a CPU in B1 and B2 is consistent since the use is already allowed in the more intensive I1 and I2 districts as a CPU. So at this point, I would uh, open the floor for discussion. Uh, your questions would be directed to legal, to legal staff or uh, zoning and planning staff. Um, so I'll open the floor to, the, to uh, those folks. Chairman. Yes, Alderman this Turner. Is, this is um, Doris Turner. I have waited so long. May I speak? Absolutely. <laughs> I love you. Okay, so um, I actually wanted to chime in on both of these last two uh, docket numbers. The, the first one is, uh, I just want to say that, you know, the state and the city has been extremely responsible in implementing the legalization of recreational, can recreational cannabis. And I believe this is another step uh, moving in that direction. This will allow people the opportunity to consume a legal substance um, only in conjunction with a cannabis dispensing organization. So you're not going to see uh, cannabis lounges pop up. This is only in conjunction with a cannabis dispensing organization. And the reason why I think that this is important is because, as you know, there are a number of restrictions uh, in place on where a person can legally consume a legal substance. And, you know, you, you, it's prohibited in subsidized housing, uh, it's prohibited around children, it's prohibited in some rental properties, and it's prohibited in the public. So this is an opportunity to provide people uh, a place where they can consume, again, a legal substance. And right now in the city of Springfield, there are only, uh, there's one location that, uh, the downtown location that, uh, and then there is another one that has been uh, received a license. So there are only two locations within the city of Springfield where this would be uh, an issue. The other thing that I want to also, uh, you know, just kind of reiterate is that every single request will have to come back to your committee for approval and then go to the city council for approval. So there's a two layer approval process for every single request that would, uh, that would come up. Very good. We appreciate your remarks. And, and I, I failed to ask, are there any objector uh, comments? Seeing none, are there? Abstain, oh, Tim. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have to abstain. I'm, I'm partners with one of the attorneys that represents uh, the, one of the cannabis license holders, so I can't vote. Okay, very good. I have a question. Uh, we have a question from Commissioner Wood. Yes, I'm assuming that the second location then is the old Outback. Yes, that is the second location, and um, as you are aware, it is uh, will be operated by the same individuals that Correct. operate the downtown location. Thank you. Other questions for Alderman Turner or for professional staff? I have a question for uh, Corporation Council. Go ahead, please. On the, um, the copy of the ordinance that I received, and I know that staff picked up on two Scribner errors, 
under section 155 492 regarding the conditional permitted use uh, the very first sentence starts out with medical cannabis cultivation centers then it describes several other uses says they are permitted in the i1 and i2 um, back on section 155 211.5 uh, that should be, as staff recommended, B1, B2, I1, and I2. Right. Seems like there might be some confusion about, uh, in my mind, whether or not under 495, uh, B1 and B2 should be listed. So if, if council would look at that, uh, it may just be a Scribner's error, or I may be wrong. Be sure to look at it to make sure that when it goes to council, everything conforms after your recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Linda. Any other questions? So the first motion is to go to docket number 2020-20. Do I have a motion? A motion. Like a, motion to, to the staff's recommendation. Motion by Commissioner Wolford, seconded by Commissioner Wood. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Wolford? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Graven? Yes. Commissioner Gooden? Yes. Commissioner Wood? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Strom? Yes. Commissioner Christian? Yes. Commissioner Stratton? Yes. Okay, very good. And then we have uh, docket number 2020-021. Go ahead and read that, Steve. Okay. Uh, staff recommends approval in case 21, pursuant to the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act, the City of Springfield's proposed a series of amendments to the zoning ordinance that makes several substantive changes concerning adult use cannabis. Amend sections 155.033, 155.034, 155.211.9, and 155.492 to allow adult use craft growers in B1 and B2 as conditional permitted uses, where they are currently CPUs in I1 and I2. Amend section 155.494 to allow adult use craft growers to be located on multiple use tenant or shared parking property. Amend section 155.496A to reduce the sensitive areas buffer for craft growers from 2,500 to 1,500 feet. And amend section 155.496 to add craft growers to dispensaries as businesses that may be located within 1,500 feet of certain other adult use cannabis business establishments. The remaining changes to the ordinance are minor cleanup items to which staff does not have comment. It was also noticed there are two minor non-substantive corrections to the ordinance as written that staff recommends should be fixed prior to final action by the council. Uh, Section 155.211.5, correct the first sentence of the text to say B1, comma B2 instead of B2, comma B2, and section 155.211.11, correct the second 155.211.11 to say 155.211.12 in the heading. Thank you. So uh, that's the staff recommendation. Do I have a, uh, any discussion? I, I have a, may I speak? Yes, go ahead, please, Alderman Turner. Okay, so um, I, I just want everybody to keep in mind that we were the first municipality in the state of Illinois to enact a recreational, recreational cannabis ordinance, so it's reasonable that we would be uh, coming back with amendments as we move forward into actual community and business participation. Um, and everything, the amendments that we are proposing are all in line with uh, the state with state law. So everything that we're doing is just to make our ordinance conform with state law. And again, each and every um, application will come back to your committee and then to city council for approval. So there continues to be that two uh, layer uh, approval process. Very good. Any questions for uh, staff or Alderman Turner? I have a question for, for Alderman. So I'm just, I'm not a question, I just want some clarity, basically. So that's that was one of my questions, because I, I know we have some other issues in other areas uh, regarding what the state considers, you know, distance, um, as opposed to what the city allows. So uh, just for clarity, the state, the state's, um, the, the state's limit for example, the craft growers is 1,500 as opposed to 2,500. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that, that's exactly correct. Uh, actually, when we were when we were putting the city ordinance together, keep in mind that state 
legislation is thousands of pages long. Right. And so this is just one of the areas, this is just one instance where instead of the 1500 that was included in the state legislation, ours was 2500 and we're just moving to conform with state legislation. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. Yep. All right. Very good. Uh, in that respect, are there other questions? Very good. Then I would entertain a motion from one of the um, one of the commissioners, please. Uh, motion to accept staff recommendation. Motion by Commissioner Wolford. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wood. Please call the roll. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Graven. Yes. Commissioner Gooden. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. No. Commissioner Strom. Yes. Commissioner Christian. Yes. Commissioner, oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Stauffer is abstaining. Uh, yeah, present. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Stratton. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Wolford. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, Alderman Turner, thank you so much for that and uh, for your patience yeah, this you. evening sit, sitting through all that fun. Thank you so much for allowing me to spend my entire Wednesday night with you all. We enjoy staying in place, <laughs> safe, healthy, and sitting here with you all night. Okay, good night. Good back night. Next, next lunch. Commissioners, before you leave, we have one more item on the agenda. And the first item is I'm going to nominate uh, Alderman Bruce, former Alderman Bruce Strom, to be uh, vice president uh, of Bruce, this Alderman August Bruce council. Be, uh, vice president. I'm sorry, what? I'm, all for, um, I'm, I'm nominating you to be the vice Please. chair of the commission. Do you accept? I still missed part of your word. It's cutting out. I all said yes. Say yes, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they say on spam calls, you're never supposed to use the word yes. But <laughs> okay, whatever it is you're asking me, I, okay. I would like you to be the, remain, to remain the vice chair of the committee. Oh, oh, okay. Now I heard you. Very sure, good. that's fine. And then that's I'm going to hand the... Give me a second. Uh, we need a second on that. Second, second by Commissioner Wood. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any other nominations for president, chief executive officer, and chairman? <coughs> then I'm going to pass the baton to uh, Commissioner Wood. Let's receive any nominations and then. So we're open for nominations for the chairman. Uh, first of all, I would like to continue with the great job Tim has been doing and nominate him, but we're open for others too. You got to answer or we never get to go home. Oh, we second it? Second, what? second, second, third, fourth, fifth. What do I need? <laughs> Close the nominations. Nominations are closed. We need a vote now. All in favor, say aye. 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 Good Thank job. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you wash your hands now. I will. <laughs> uh, well, you've you've uh, frittered away another three hours of your precious time. Uh, I really appreciate everybody's patience and engagement. I know it's <laughs> it's challenging. I want to thank uh, the staff, especially for holding it all together and doing the flawless professional job they always do. And a special shout out to IT for getting us all glued together. Thank you and have a good evening. Good night. Great job. Uh, thank thank you. you. And Betsy, I, I did not write on most of this. If you want to use it for someone if not i'm going to put it in the pile let me put it in the pile okay. tom i meant you to have